the only creature who was not allowed to enter Noah's Ark. Noah's Ark was created to save Noah, his family, and a couple of all the animals of the world, but one creature was not chosen to be saved, because God prevented him from being saved. Most of us know the story of the flood and Noah's Ark as a shelter from the destruction of the human race because of its evil, but few know the secret that this story hides, and that is the Nephilim, the mysterious creatures who did not get on the Ark and did not survive the flood. The evil created by the Nephilim is what caused God to make such a difficult decision to destroy mankind. According to the biblical story of the Nephilim, they are the result of evil angels mating with humans' daughters in the days of Noah, thus creating violent superhumans. The sons of God saw that the daughters of humans were beautiful, and they married any of them they chose. Genesis 6 verse 2 Those sons of God were actually angels who rebelled against God when they abandoned their place in heaven, became human beings, and began to take women they wanted because they saw how beautiful they were. As a result of this unnatural union, hybrid children were born who were not ordinary children. They were strong, mysterious, and evil. When the sons of God went to the daughters of humans and had children by them, they were the heroes of old, men of renown. The Lord saw how great the wickedness of the human race had become on the earth, and that every inclination of the thoughts of the human heart was only evil all the time. Genesis 6 verse 4 to 5 The Nephilim were wicked, and filled the world with violence. So God said to Noah, I am going to put an end to all people, for the earth is filled with violence because of them. I am surely going to destroy both them and the earth. Genesis 6 verse 13 A shadow of evil and wrath was cast on the earth and on all creation because of the Nephilim. The world became a violent place, they began to control humanity and quickly brought it to moral and value corruption. Then God saw that this was enough and decided to destroy mankind. But alongside having to destroy humanity, God knew that he had to save all the animals he created because no flaw was found in them. And in order to do this he must choose a human representative who has no evil in him. That is how Noah was chosen, since he had a special personality of a righteous person who was not evil, and he was Noah is a key figure in the transition between the past and the future before and after the flood. Noah had a choice regarding his moral behavior, he could have chosen to be wicked like the rest of his generation, but he chose to be righteous. After he chose him, God commands Noah to build an ark and tells him about his plan to destroy the world with a flood. The mission assigned to Noah is to save his family and the animals that God created. The Lord then said to Noah, Go into the ark, you and your whole family because I have found you righteous in this generation. Genesis 7 verse 1 Not everyone noticed the fact, that it was God who invited Noah and his family into the ark to join him. God's invitation to Noah to come into the ark is very interesting. The invitation is for Noah and his family, which includes his wife, three sons, and their three wives. God invites Noah to join him in the ark, starting with God telling Noah, go to, what was not said to Noah before. We must remember that the construction of the ark took 120 years, something that could have corrupted Noah or his family's behavior. However, God does set one condition, which is that the Nephilim are not allowed into the ark. After all, they were the ones who caused the corruption of the world and the evil that prevails in it. Noah received God's command, he was confused, yet he trusted God's word and followed his strict instructions. Perhaps the thing that made the Nephilim more dangerous was, that they saw Noah building a huge wooden ark for 120 years, and realized only at the moment of the flood that they were not invited, 
which created many questions around the story of if the Nephilim survived the flood. The ark was built and just before the flood began, humanity saw animals of all species that entered the ark. Then Noah entered, his wife, his daughters-in-law, and his sons, and then God closed the door of the ark. The animals going in were male and female of every living thing, as God had commanded Noah. Then the Lord shut him in. Genesis 7 verse 16 And again the verse implies that God himself was with Noah in the ark. God was the one who called Noah to come to the ark, and he was the one who closed the door of the ark before the start of the flood. Closing the door by God is a symbol that after God's judgment on the world, there was not one person who could change their ways and enter the ark. It is symbolized the point of no going back. Then the Bible says that everyone outside the ark has died in the flood. The waters rose and covered the mountains to a depth of more than 15 cubits. Every living thing that moved on land perished, birds, livestock, wild animals, all the creatures that swarm over the earth, and all mankind. Everything on dry land that had the breath of life in its nostrils died. Every living thing on the face of the earth was wiped out, people and animals and the creatures that move along the ground and the birds were wiped from the earth. Only Noah was left, and those with him in the ark. Genesis 7 verses 20 to 23. All Nephilim died in the flood, since they did not enter the ark. Furthermore, the Bible confirms that only the righteous in faith survived the flood, and all the wicked on earth, including the rebellious angels and their descendants. Disallowing the Nephilim from entering the ark turned out to be the right decision. Despite their extinction, the legacy of the Nephilim continued in later stories. It also goes all the way to Moses by reporting on the Nephilim, seen by the twelve spies of the Israelites, who spied for forty days in the Promised Land. Perhaps the spies lied when they said that the tall Rephaim tribe was the giant Nephilim, and they grossly distorted the comparison when they said that the Israelites were only the size of locusts next to them. But along with the false report of the ten fearful and faithless spies, there was a report by the two faithful spies, Joshua and Caleb. Because of the negative report and the fear of the Israelites, God punished the entire generation that did not believe in his power, by wandering for forty years in the Sinai desert until the faithless generation died, except for Joshua and Caleb. And so the next generation inherited the promised land. The story of the Nephilim did not survive the flood of Noah's day. The report of the spies was a figment of the imagination of the spies of the land and the faithless Israelites, despite the fact that they witnessed the miraculous victory over the Egyptian elite army drowned in the Red Sea. The term Nephilim appears twice in the Bible, once in Genesis 6 verse 4 and once in Numbers 13:33. The exact identity of the Nephilim and the sons of God is a matter of debate among scholars, with some proposing that the sons of God were fallen angels and others suggesting that they were descendants of Seth. It is a very deep reminder of the destructive consequences of sin, but also a demonstration of God's justice, which is why Noah's Ark is remembered as a symbol of hope and salvation. We hope you learned something new today. If you did, give this video a like and share it with your friends. You can share with us what you know by leaving a comment below. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more informative and entertaining content. Thank you so much and see you next time. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up and share with your friends so we can keep making them. For more videos like this, hit the subscribe button and remember to click on the notification bell. Also, be sure to check out our other videos as well. Thanks for watching.